Greetings electric bike friends, this is Forrest Woolman back here with you at the Electric Bike Report and today I'm excited to talk to you about this very cool e-bike, the Core, from Venice, California based e-bike brand Pedal Electric. Featuring its inverted upside down suspension forks, coil spring rear shocks, 750 watt rear hub motor and 15 amp hour battery, this unique e-bike is designed to give you fun off-road or fun riding with your friend on the bike while also giving you ride quality and feel unlike the other moped style e-bikes we've tested here at Electric Bike Report. So if you're interested to learn more about the pedal core and how its special suspension gives you a ride like no other, then you'll want to stay here on the Electric Bike Report channel because I'll be sharing a lot of important information I'm sure you'll want to hear about. We've had quite a few moto-inspired e-bikes come through for our review lately, some with hardtail designs and some supporting monoshock in the rear. But the Pedal Core e-bike has the distinction of being the first full suspension moped style electric bike we've tested here at EBR that can be comfortably pedaled by a six foot tall rider like me, yay! The previous ones we tested fit shorter riders and people like me, we had to lean heavily into using the throttle instead of pedaling. But this bike has dual suspension set up that borrows its design features from the off-road motorcycle world. Now the front fork is inverted, also known as upside down design, and that's like what you see on high performance motorcycles. Compared to the suspension forks you see on almost every other e-bike out there, this fork mounts like it's upside down with the thinner, shorter part called the stanchion connected to the front wheel axle. Meanwhile, the thicker part of the fork, called the slider, mounts up here at the steering head. This, uh, this design makes the front suspension a little more rigid, especially when you hit that first bump, but this design gives you a better overall suspension experience, especially if you're riding off-road a lot, like me, and if you like riding with the passenger on the back seat here. This helps explain why Pedal chose this dual rear shock design. The coil spring is more durable and can handle more weight than air shocks that you normally see on fancy e-mountain bikes. And they also require less maintenance than air shocks. And they're easier to adjust the preload. All you need is a simple $10 spanner wrench and just turn it a couple clicks until you've got the right tension there in your spring. You don't see these kind of shocks on e-mountain bikes because they weigh a little more and they're a little more rigid than what e-mountain bike riders want or need. The inverted fork and dual shock design worked incredibly well for us on our off-road tests. In fact, of all the moped style e-bikes I've tested here, off-road for Electric Bike Report, this pedal core has one of the nicest suspension setups I've seen so far, which is something for you to think about if you're looking to mostly ride off-road. Now the motor is a powerful Bafung 750 watt rear hub motor that quickly gets this bike up to 20 miles per hour in the class two mode. You can change the top speed to 28 miles per hour to make it class three or 32 miles per hour for sport mode. But you'll want to make sure you check what local laws and make sure you're in compliance with what the e-bike law is of where you're riding. Now the long stationary seat on this bike is also an idea borrowed from the motorcycle world. This long seat is good if you're riding solo down a steep hill and you need to slide your butt back more. And it's also good if your legs are a little too long to pedal comfortably in the normal upright riding position. Now this seat is stationary, meaning there's no quick release to raise it for taller riders or to lower it for lower riders, for shorter riders. That means this bike is limited in the rider sizes it can accommodate for pedaling. Since I'm six foot tall with a 32 inch midseam, I was able to pedal comfortably on this bike, as comfortable as a non-adjusting seats go anyways. And this seat sits three inches higher than the other moped style e-bikes I've ridden so I was really happy to see the pedal offer this style of bike in a size that I can be comfortable with. Now the core looks simple, but it's stylish with all the black color, no fenders, and a simple side panel that covers most of the 15 amp hour battery that's mounted beneath the seat. Now with the knobby tires and BMX style handlebar with the 10 and a half inch riser, this bike almost looks like a BMX bike made for adults. 
And in a way it is, except for the additional power from the motor and the battery, both of which are succinctly hidden from plain view, as you can see here. This bike is made for having fun and is uniquely different from most of the e-bikes that you've probably seen before. The core's simple solid build, fast motor, sturdy suspension, they all have the potential to satisfy outback riders and commuters alike. But we've hardly scratched the surface on what this bike is all about. So we'll dive a little bit deeper here on the details covering the key specs here next. Like I've already mentioned before, the core sports a fork and rear shock that gives this bike fabulous suspension. Both the fork and rear shock are generic though, that is not produced by a name brand. But they do feature the right design to optimize what the suspension can do for you and what you can handle. Now the inverted, also known as upside down fork, has better rigidity and strength for repeated bumps and drop-offs. And the dual rear shocks with their coil spring and piggyback reservoir are the best bet for handling the 400 pound weight capacity this bike can take, while also minimizing possible shock fade when you're tackling those long downhills and whoop de doos With the motor, you get rocket-like speed produced by the Bafung 750 watt rear hub motor. Tethered by its right-hand half-grip throttle that propels it up to 20 miles per hour fairly quickly, the pedal assist system is adjustable, so you can make it a Class 2 e-bike that maxes out at 20 miles per hour, Class 3 at 28 miles per hour, or sport mode at 32 miles per hour. You want to make sure your PAS setting is in compliance with local e-bike laws, though, because depending on where you're riding, it might be illegal to be riding it in sport mode or Class 3. Tucked away beneath the long saddle is your 15 amp hour battery that gives this motor the juice it needs. The battery charge port it can be easily accessed right here at the bottom rear, or you can easily slide the battery out for charging and for security. There's also an on and off button at the rear that you'll need to press before you turn on the PAS display to go for a ride. Now for the PAS system, there's five levels on this bike and it's activated by the plus and minus buttons that you see here on the left of the left-hand side of the display screen. There's nothing fancy about this system, but it did a good job of dispersing the speed options we selected when we were riding. So the brakes on this bike have the pedal logo on it, meaning we've never seen it before since this is the first pedal electric bike we tested. They are hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors with dual piston calipers. Now the gearing, this is interesting, the gearing is provided by a simple Shimano three-speed concoction that we haven't seen before. The folks at Pedal said they chose this for simplicity. The 17 to 23 tooth cassette wasn't something we'd choose for this bike given the ghost pedaling issue we experienced when topping out at 20 miles per hour. But given the zippy acceleration we got from the throttle and PAS, we didn't need to dwell on that very often. Now, this display screen, it's a color LCD and it's pretty basic. It displays your current speed the PAS level you're in, that's in red type, total and trip miles, battery life is in green color, and there's a simple on and off button here on the underside. The standalone unit worked just fine, but a lot of companies now are coming out with companion apps, which Pedal doesn't have at the present, but might be something they could look into in the future. This can help it, it give you enhanced metrics on your ride and help with some of the customi customization you want to do with the settings on this bike. Now the handlebar and grips and cockpit design, one of the great features that give this bike the sporty riding style and cool look. These BMX style handlebars got a 10 and a half inch rise and they're not only comfortable, but they also give you a sense that you're in full control of your bike and your ride, no matter what you're riding over. The rubber grips, even though they're basic, generic, they work really, really well. And for the sporty riders who are a little more advanced in their taste, you can uh, always pop on a set of aftermarket ergonomic rubber grips on that and you'll get by fine on that. The rapid fire trigger shifter here worked great when we needed to make the occasional gear change and the levers and display were positioned in an easy to operate fashion allowing us to focus on our ride. Now overall riding comfort was really good with this long cushy saddle, easy pedaling, the grabbable grips and levers, and combined with the swift power, smooth suspension, and fat tire trekking that we did, made this all for a comfortable and enjoyable ride on this bike. So these are some of the key specs on this bike, 
It all sounds great, but how did this bike really do in our performance test? Well, that's coming up next. E-bikes like the pedal core can travel at pretty fast speeds, so we like to make sure the braking is up to the task of stopping the rider in a hurry when needed. That is why we perform a brake test. Now here at Electric Bike Report, we bring bikes up to 20 miles per hour before hitting the brakes and then measuring the distance it takes to stop. We try to brake as quickly as we can while also maintaining control of the bike in a fashion similar to how you, the average rider, would. We do this multiple times and then we calculate the average stopping distance. Every once in a while there's a diamond in the rough we discover among the tons of e-bikes we review every year. The pedal core with its performance on our brake test is one of them, 17 feet 4 inches. And consider this is a moped style e-bike with fat tires and it's a little bit heavier and it's still stopping quicker than a commuter or city bike. That is pretty amazing. In order to gain a better sense of motor engagement, we put all the bikes we review on a circuit test. The course is a one mile loop with four right hand turns and a short 30 foot climb. We do multiple laps on this course, starting with the lap with no motor assistance. Then we do one lap for each level of pedal assistance. In this case, PAS one to five for six laps total. With this, we can see the bike's speed profile and get a sense of how well the motor engages with the rider's pedaling. Now that we know that this bike stops extraordinarily well, the circuit test told us how well this bike engages with our pedaling under normal riding conditions. At this point, I have characterized this bike to possibly seem like it's a real roadrunner ready to race you across the region, but actually this bike is more timid than that in the lower PAS levels. Now, if you look at the results chart that you see on the screen, the core rides at a fairly mellow top speed in the first three PAS levels and then takes off once you click it into PAS 4 and then PAS 5. This is good for a couple of reasons. First, it has to do with carrying a passenger. If you've ever had to carry a passenger with you while riding an e-bike or a motorcycle, then you are familiar with the challenges that come with this. You want a bike that accelerates gradually you might be prepared for speeding up, but most passengers aren't prepared, and that can make them feel nervous and even possibly spoil the fun of riding. The second reason has to do with the safety when you're doing adventure riding or off-roading. You have to remember that this is an e-bike, not a motorcycle. You can have a blast riding this thing around the woods, prairies, and deserts, but you can get yourself in trouble too if you're riding beyond your capabilities, and that would happen if this bike took off more quickly than it does. And the third reason involves new riders. Since this is a new kind of e-bike, it's sure to attract new riders. It's better to have a bike like this that lets you warm up and get used to riding at slower speeds before taking off like a rocket. The top two things people want to know with e-bikes are how far does it go and how well does it do on the hills. First I'll address the distance question and then talk about the range tests we did on this bike. For testing the battery range, we do two different tests. In the minimum PAS test, we use the lowest PAS setting to give us consistent motor assistance while using the least amount of battery power. In the maximum PAS test, we use the highest PAS setting to see how far this bike will go with the motor on maximum power. In both tests, we pedal the bike at a consistent, non-exertive pace. We end the test when the battery stops providing enough power for the motor to continue assisting the bike normally. When you start riding this bike, I think you're going to find that you want to keep riding it for as long as possible. The good thing here is that the 15 amp hour battery down here will work with you for quite a while. In our long range test using PAS2 and pedaling, the battery took our test rider, TJ, 59.68 miles with a riding time of 8 hours 15 minutes and an average speed of 8.26 miles per hour. And that was with an elevation gain of 1,472 feet. It's a slower result than most, but indicative that you could take a friend with you for many miles if needed. Keep in mind that he was riding at a steady pace on smooth roads. Your range will be shorter when off-roading, depending on the terrain and your riding style. Not to worry though, because in our second range test using PAS5 the entire time, I rode this bike 36.84 miles. 
a riding time of two hours, seven minutes, and an average speed of 19.2 miles per hour, but only an elevation gain of 492 feet. But as you can see, this bike's battery can hold enough power to give you a fun time riding. I think it would be great for Pedal to offer a second battery on this bike, maybe mounted here on the down tube or maybe the seat tube, so riders can stay out longer before needing a recharge. But this bike, as it is, still has good range, and you will probably like the range you get on your Pedal Core e-bike. Now it's time to answer the second question about how well this e-bike climbs hills. To answer that, we picked one of the steeper hills in town to put this bike's motor to the limit. For our reviews, we test each e-bike at the Hellhole Trail, which is a third of a mile long, has a 12% average grade, and it's much longer and steeper than most hills an average commuter would deal with. But it helps answer the question of how helpful this e-bike can be on a climb. We run two tests for this bike. The first is the throttle only test and the second is the max PAS pedal test. Each test shows us what this bike can do under different hill climbing circumstances. So we were happy to see that the pedal core rode to the top of the hellhole trail on both tests and that satisfied our expectations. Now Justin from the EBR team was our test rider. On the throttle only test, getting this bike to the top in a minute and 35 seconds, he did an average speed of 11.4 miles per hour. Now on the maximum PAS test, where you're at PAS 5 and pedaling, he made it to the top in a minute 27 seconds, average speed of 12.5 miles per hour. Now remember how I said this bike has a three speed gearing? The cassette is a 17 to 23 tooth. Now most e-bikes we test on this hill have more gears for us to use. Therefore, we can surmise that this bike would probably climb hills better if it had something more like seven speed gearing and like I mentioned before, like 11 to 36 tooth cassette. So overall, this bike is designed and built to offer you some amazing riding experiences. The pedal core has a lot of what people desire in a moto style e-bike with the advanced suspension, fat tires, BMX look, and it appeals to adventurers and off-roaders. But you can also still use this bike for city commuting and cruising. Like the circuit test results showed, the pedal core can be pretty tame to ride around if you're only in PAS 1 or 2 and you want to ride mellow. With that being said, this bike can also light it up and bolt ahead when you want it to. So there's a happy medium with the power band this 750 watt motor cranks out. Now riders who are sized like me are sure to appreciate having a bike this size that they can pedal comfortably. Thanks to the awesome motorcycle inspired suspension, this bike looks ready to roll on the roads and feels like you can hit some trails with confidence. The styling brilliantly blends both worlds, making it feel like it equally belongs riding down city streets or through the woods. This is a great crossover bike for riders who want something with off-road capability, but don't want to spend $5,000 or more on the fancier e-motocross bikes. Plus, with the pedal core, you're getting a bike that can be set as class two or a class three bike, which is allowed in a lot more places than those faster, more expensive electric motorcycles. Now, depending on what, you, what state you're riding in, you won't have to red tape also, like OHV registration um, for riding this bike around. You can ride it also on city streets without a motorcycle license and without proof of insurance. There are a lot of positives to choosing this bike over the other ones that are out there. So that's it with our review of the Pedal Core electric bike. If you found this review helpful, please give this video a like. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Electric Bike Report channel and hit that notification bell. If you want to reread the info I presented here, along with a lot of other important information about this bike, click the link. And you also want to check out the in-depth article I wrote that's posted on our site. For current pricing and availability on this bike, click the Check Best Price link. So that's it. I'm Forrest Woolman with the Electric Bike Report. Thanks for watching. I look forward to hopefully seeing you out there on the bike trails one of these days. And please, please, please remember, keep your hands on the bar, your feet on the pedals, and your eyes on the road. And I'll be happy to see you here next time on the Electric Bike Report channel.